Donna, thank you so much for your time. I know you just arrived from Australia, so you must be still super tired jet lag, even though I know you can manage that quite well. Um, first of all, how was the trip? How was the experience? And I mean, from what we've seen, it must have been not easy. What was some of the toughest things you had to deal with? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I'm not really struggling with the jet lag. So especially coming back from Australia, it's good because I go to bed early and I wake up early. So that's a... Uh, that's really nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was a, a very tough trip, actually. I was uh, really just talking with my team and we were saying how it was definitely one of the toughest trips we ever done. It was a long one and mentally quite uh, t tiring as well. It's always physically tiring, but this one was mentally tough, starting with the two week quarantine. And we got out of the quarantine. It was very up and down, but um, result wise was, uh, was okay for me. You know, we've seen the last couple of months, fans without fans. How tough is that? Because for me, I think that would be one of the struggles. What do you have to tell yourself in a match when suddenly, you know, there is no one watching? I would be like, well, why to bother? Like, <laughs> how, do you, how do you go about it? Yeah, for me personally, it was uh, very difficult, especially last year with no fans at all. Uh, but you know, I was talking to some girls and they actually prefer it. They say, oh, there's no pressure, there's no people, it's better. And for me, it was complete opposite. It was a, it was a disaster, like you say. It's not why bother, because at the end of the day, we play for us. But when there's an atmosphere, it's... Uh, it's like practice. Even if, you, even if you play bad, you, the crowd can make you play better and can make push you through some, some of those tough matches. But um, yeah, it was tough. So I was uh, very happy to play in... Uh, at least my first couple of matches in Australia in front of people. So we've got Roland Garros here before we even know it. It's just a couple of months away. Um, now, I know you grew up on clay, so obviously it's a tournament very close to you. Eva Maioli winning it when you were you know, just a teenager. What's your relationship to the tournament and how much it means to you? Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite tournaments. Uh, I love being in, in Paris uh, as well. So really looking forward to it every year. Before I used to have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Clay, but now it's uh, more love-love. Uh, the love is more mutual <laughs> because uh, the last couple of years I really enjoyed uh, playing on Clay and the other tournaments as well. So uh, I'm really looking forward to, to coming back uh, on Clay. Please keep that love, love, because I was the same like you. I hated it, even though I think, just like me, we can play well on clay, which is in our head. So please keep this attitude from now on, <laughs> whenever you come. So you said uh, you enjoy coming to Paris, and lo a lo most of the players do. What is it exactly that you love about the city and Roland Garros? For me, uh, I... I don't know. That's 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 a good question. I never actually thought about what what do I love about Paris, but I think just the general atmosphere. It's uh, it's something different to other other tournaments, and you know when when I have days off it, between the the matches, I I like to go to the city. I like to have a walk, maybe do a little bit of shopping, uh, eat uh, eat in some of the restaurants. So it's uh, definitely a good atmosphere there. Uh, to me, you are one of the most stylish persons on the court of the court. So that's why I was so excited to talk to you about Paris and fashion. Uh, how would you describe in your own uh, way your style? Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I can say the same for you <laughs> also. Uh, I would say that I like to keep it simple. Um, I uh, Simple and I, I like to be... I try try to keep it uh, as uh, classy as possible. And, you know, I don't like to mix, uh, mix too much. And I think, yeah, just simple is what I really try to go for. And I like a lot recently dresses. Dresses are my, my go-to. And uh, because it's to, to travel is the easiest thing. You don't have to think about when you're packing, you don't have to think about the outfits because the dress, that's the outfit. <laughs> so it is, it's the easiest thing, but for me, Recently, I'm really struggling with packing and traveling light. I swear, I have so much. I always take so much clothes, and I never wear it, not like not even half. Yeah, but it's worth it because I'm from sure the you know this problem, I'm sure you know this problem. <laughs> yes, and the thing is, when I stopped playing and I started to do TV, I was like, right now I will be traveling really light. It's even worse except the minus the tennis bag <laughs> so but it's worth it because from the looks we see on your instagram there are just some amazing ones especially now in, in australia 
when you go to Paris, do you pack differently? Because to me, that was the one uh, slime that I would pack more glamorous than anywhere else. Whew, um, I think what I, where I pack the most glamorous is probably Paris and then New York. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wimbledon uh, for London, not so much because we always <laughs> in a house, so it's a, it's a little bit of a different atmosphere except the Wimbledon party. But uh, for uh, for Paris, yeah, for Paris and New York, I, I probably take a couple of he heels extra. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about your beauty regime? Because you travel so much, you're constantly on the flight. Uh, how do you take care of your skin, your body, and maybe some of things that you would recommend someone else that travels a lot as well? Well, you know, uh, I definitely think uh, nutrition is very important when it comes to skin. I think it's the number one because what you put inside is how you, I really think I'm it's so how you're going to be. saying it. <laughs> it's, I really think it's how you're going to be. So if my skin is bad, you can tell that I've been not eating so good and maybe had a little bit too much chocolate. But uh, yeah, I like to have i'd like to start my days actually with the green juice but definitely i i have a, a lot of creams and okay we've been doing a lot of quarantine so i've been what i do face mask every single day <laughs> there's the same like four <laughs> times a week i'm like what <laughs> no, when i was when i was in um, in uh, australia in melbourne now I was, I would be talking to Carolina Plisko and we would just both be in bed with face mask on and pajamas. That, that was, uh, that was us like 60% of the time in the quarantine. Yeah, that is so true. I've never used so many masks <laughs> than the last couple of months. Uh, okay, let's try to think about Paris, Paris, Paris. Um, well, you said that on your days off, you like to go to some of the coffee places or restaurants. Any recommendations, if you can name a few that are your favorites? I, I know this one is very cliche and they, everyone goes there, but I love Love and You. I'm mm, sure you, I'm sure you know it. For me, it's a perfect spot because I also, in Paris, I love to do people watching. Mm. <laughs> yes. It's fun. And I think there you can see uh, everyone really dresses up well. So it's really cool to look at uh, other people's uh, outfits. It's actually a good point because uh, you have so much pressure, always people looking at you during the matches. So it's nice to actually turn it around and be the one looking and, and judging. Yeah. <laughs> I try to take like a little table in the corner where I see everyone, but no one sees me. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, Roland Garros tries to be and does an incredible job being also environmental friendly and conscious. Uh, what would you say are some of your things that you try to do during the tournament and be a little bit more conscious this way? Uh, I mean, for me, I hate to see, I'm always picking up other players' trash on court. I, I hate to see this. Uh, we, some, okay, I cannot, I don't even know how to name names and I don't want, but some players don't even know how to put the, the plastic bottle they use in the yeah. trash. So I think uh, as, a, as a tennis community, we're very far from being uh, uh, helpful in this, but I hope, you know, I think also these tournaments can help and I think Roland Garros is doing a great example by putting different um, uh, trash cans on, even on court where we can separate uh, plastic from paper and things like that. I think this is for sure uh, a good step to, to, to better. Now let's talk uh, really specific uh, styles. So I'm gonna, first of all, you tell me who in your opinion has been the most stylish male or female player in the history of tennis. Um, I think for female, uh, I think Anna Ivanovic has always been uh, very, very stylish and she was always uh, has, she just dresses simple, but it's always not nice and uh, classy and she always looks good. And for guys, uh, hmm, I'm, I'm not sure. I see a lot of them uh, off the court, they don't bother, they wear tracksuit uh, <laughs> also. But uh, I think uh, for sure we can say Roger has been... Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes very, very stylish uh, of the court. Maybe Grigor Dimitrov has some interesting styles sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so you already mentioned one that um, I have here as a list. Uh, I'm going to tell you three guys and three girls that you need to nominate for the next round as far as okay. style and elegance. It doesn't have to be the best looking, but for you, what, what's more, most uh, stylish? So male, uh, we've got Roger Federer, John McEnroe and Guy Forget. Oh, Guy has a good style. I saw him a couple of times uh, in Geneva before in the past, so I'll go, for, I'll go with him. 
Okay, so we've got Guy here, and on the girls' side, Gabriela Sabatini, Chris Evert, and Anna Kurnikova. I'll go for Chrissy. Good, good picks here, loving it. <laughs> okay, and the very last thing, I'll give you 10 firing questions. Not too much thinking, just go for it. Okay, okay. ready? So, Avenue Montan or Fifth Avenue? Avenue Montan. Macarons or crepes? <laughs> Tough one. Crepes. High heels or ballerinas? High heels. Italian or French cuisine? Italian. Pardon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dresses or two pieces for match? Dresses. Sprints on the court or weights in the gym? Sprints <laughs> on the court. Really? Wow. Okay. I That's cannot. The weight, the weight session in the gym is the most boring thing ever. So. No way. I was the opposite. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was so slow. Uh, first match on or a night session? Night session. Wine or champagne? Wine. Louvre or Versailles? Ooh, Louvre. Dior or Chanel? Dior. Oof, this is a tough one. <laughs> oh, the problems we have. <laughs> Anyways, well, Donna, thank you so much for your time. Um, I hope we'll see each other very soon because, like I said, um, you know, May it's coming up uh, quickly. So good luck with everything, and uh, see you in Paris. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>